Good afternoon and welcome to Deutsche Telekom's conference call. At our customers' request, this conference will be recorded and uploaded to the Internet. May I now hand you over to Mr. Hannes Wittig. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our first quarter 2016 conference call. With me today are our CEO, Tim Hötkes, and our CFO, Thomas Dannenfeld. Tim will first go through a few highlights of the quarter, followed by Thomas, who will talk about the quarter's financials. After this, we have, as usual, time for a Q&A. Before I hand over to Tim, please pay attention to our usual disclaimer, which you will find in the presentation. And now it's my pleasure to hand over to Tim for his highlights of the quarter. Yeah, thank you, Hannes, and uh, well, welcome to everybody also here from my side. And um, let's start with the highlights um, uh, for the first quarter. Um, the strong momentum continued, um, uh, strong momentum with investments, with customers and um, uh, with earnings. We remain well on track for our group targets. Uh, we presented to you at our Capital Markets Day last year and uh, we also strongly reiterate our guidance for 2016. The first slide is a quick reminder of our main strategic building blocks, uh, you might all know. This includes our focus on integrated IP networks, our commitment to create the best customer experience, our ambitions to lead in business and to work with partners where it makes sense. And maybe later in the, in the discussion, um, I could show you that in each of these categories, um, we have tangible um, uh, products and um, uh, measures, uh, how we improved um, uh, in this regards. Going to um, slide number four, I'd like to summarize um, uh, the first quarter highlights. Um, the biggest number might be the five million German homes uh, which are now connected um, um, with fiber. The demand for our fiber products remains strong and even accelerated. We added a new record of 660,000 fiber customers in the last three months, months alone. In the US, we gained 2.2 million subscribers this quarter and our service revenue momentum accelerated to 14%, outstanding quarter. We continue to have invest heavily in our networks and into innovation, um, in fiber, in LTE and in our industry-leading uh, PAN-IP network transformation. Our financial momentum remains positive. Headline revenues grew by 5%, EBITDA grew by 13% and our free cash flow was on track. Without the contribution from um, US handset leasing and data stash on EBITDA, um, the uh, number was up by 6.5% year on year. But if you also take into account last year's 175 million settlement uh, with Liberty, the EBITDA grew by 10.6%. Adjusted for the disposal of EE, free cash flow grew by 11%. So our double digit momentum continues. The next page shows you some examples of the strong momentum we are seeing with our customers. I mentioned already our success with fiber in Germany, where we added 2 million homes in the last 12 months, and our relentless customer growth in the US where we gained 9 million subscribers in the last 12 months. We continue to see good momentum with our convergence products as well. We now have 3.3 million converged subscriptions here in Europe, of which 2.2 million um, only in Germany, and the trek is um, uh, um, well on its way. In the cloud, we continue to grow at 30% year on year, Maybe some of you took part in our cloud webinar last month. The replay is still available on our investor relations website. Page seven summarizes a few of my highlights this quarter. Let me start with the innovations. You know, never lose the high end. Last time I told you about the main, many innovations we presented at this year's Mobile World Congress. You may remember our demonstration of one millisecond latency in a wireless network or our world record of 11 gigabit per second over a standard kappa line. Our next big milestone was the year's CeBIT Fair, where we launched a number of innovative products, including our open telecom cloud and a portfolio of security solutions. On the consumer side, we were happy to see YouTube 
joining the list of providers on our innovative binge on service platform in the US. And in Germany, late last week, we announced our new consumer TV platform um, called Entertain TV Plus, which offers exciting features such as instant restart or a seven day replay facility for selected content. It's not needed to store this, uh, uh, to program it. You always are able to watch the content um, you would like to see. And our much improved video aggregation platform with SVOD um, uh, partners um, uh, uh, is available on this platform as well. Our network deployment continues apace. We now reach 56% of German homes with fiber. Our LTE network covers 91% of the population and we now have 43% of German, German homes on our peer-leading all-IP infrastructure, up from 40% at the end of last year's. By the way, uh, in LTE, if you compare Germany um, um, with the rest of Europe, um, uh, with 91% um, of the population covered, we are well ahead. And if you go into the countryside, um, we um, have now opened up a lot of areas where we had formerly edge um, uh, available. Um, we are significantly ahead of what you would might find in France or in Spain or in Italy, where the average um, uh, uh, coverage is uh, around 30 to 40 percent. In Europe, our networks were highly rated in recent tests. In the recent network test by P3, the company behind the Connect test um, that many of you know, our Dutch network achieved the highest score ever awarded to any mobile operator. In the last 12 months, P3 has awarded eight of our netcos, including those in Greece, Hungary and in Poland. The best in test seal and of course, we also won the German Connect test for the fifth year in a row. And as you know, the T-Mobile network remains the fastest 4G network in the US. I think you see how consequent we are executing along our strategic pillars. Supporting our network leadership, our CapEx grew 12% this quarter. We also spent 1.1 billion on Spectrum. Of this, we spent half a billion to boost our Spectrum position in Poland, while the other half was spent in the US on one of the two A-block portfolios, which we talked about at the time of full-year results. As we have mentioned earlier, the two A-block transactions will boost our low-band coverage by 68 million pops. The low-band spectrum will improve our service quality in the areas in which we already operate and allow us to substantially increase the area in which we commercially operate. It was a quiet quarter for M&A, but it was a busy quarter for funding. At the beginning of March, we raised bonds worth 4.5 billion to cover this year's maturities. The terms were very attractive, thanks to Mr. Draghi. T-Mobile US, meanwhile, secured a further 5 billion towards its stated funding envelope. As you know, of this 5 billion, 4 billion were provided through note purchase agreements with Deutsche Telekom. 1 billion were raised through a bond issuance in the public market. This approach marks a partial departure from our strict self-funding principle that we established a few years ago. And I've discussed it with a lot of investors advance, by the way. Given the fantastic progress of T-Mobile in recent years, we feel very comfortable in taking this step, which is accretive to our shareholders. But let me stress three important points. First, there's no read across to the other pillars of our stated US strategy. We continue to look at T-Mobile as a kingmaker asset. Second, there's also no read across to the spectrum auction. And thirdly, as you can see, we are following a case-by-case -case logic. Moving on to our group financials. We are very happy with our first quarter's 2016 performance and we reiterate our stated guidance for 2016 as a whole. 
we also reiterate the group targets that we stated at last year's Capital Markets Day. Our headline revenue grew by almost 5%, comfortably ahead of our medium-term guidance. The sequential slowdown this quarter is largely due to lower handset revenues in Germany and the US due to the shifts in the commercial model. Despite our high investments, we were able to achieve double-digit growth in comparable cash flow and adjusted EBITDA, as I already mentioned. Our financial metrics remain either in line or ahead, sometimes strongly ahead of the run rates we committed at last year's Capital Markets Day. With this, I want to hand over to Thomas, who will provide you with more details regarding our first quarter performance. Yeah, thanks, Tim, and um, good afternoon from my side as well. Uh, my first slide shows the financial highlights for the group as a whole. And um, as you can see, our financial momentum remained very strong in the first quarter. Headline earnings benefited from a 2.5 billion book gain on the sale of our stake in EE2BT. Our adjusted earnings grew slightly, although Q1.15 had benefited from a 175 million non-recurring item. Now let's have a look at the, the segments. In Germany, our Q1 revenues were down by 2.5%, mainly as a result of lower handset sales and, to a lesser extent, due to a strong prior year comparable in mobile services. EBITDA was down slightly year on year, and this reflects the tough mobile service revenue comp as well as cost phasing. For the year as a whole, we continue to expect stable EBITDA. Our mobile service revenues declined 1.7% this quarter, and we will take a closer look at this in the following slide. We gained uh, 231,000 contract uh, customers, and the um, own branded customer trends remain steady. The next slide is now uh, by now familiar to you. As you can see, the direct from convergence on mobile service revenues is no longer growing, as expected. Nevertheless, we are showing a 1.7% decline in our mobile service revenues. The weakness this quarter is largely a reflection of the exceptional strength we showed in the first quarter of 2015 and which we explained at that time with some unusual volatility in our large accounts. What is important is that we do not see a change in German market fundamentals or in our underlying performance. So we continue to expect 1% annual CAGR in our mobile service revenues and we're confident that we will show a better trend next quarter. In the fixed line market, we added 62,000 broadband customers. This marked a sequential improvement. For the year as a whole, we expect to deliver at least as many net ads as we did last year. We added 53,000 new TV subscribers. As Tim has mentioned, we have now launched our new entertainment platform, which we expect to drive accelerating momentum later in the year. Line losses ticked a bit, and this is a reflection of our broadband performance. Here again, for the year as a whole, we expect to do at least as well as we did in 2015. And uh, now let me talk a little bit about the really amazing part of the German section. I think it was another record quarter for fiber growth. After 532,000 net ads in Q4, we provided a further 660,000 with fiber this quarter, almost 200,000 more than one year ago. As in the previous quarters, the majority of these customers were on our retail platform. Our broadband revenues continue to improve as a consequence of this. We saw 1.8% growth in the first quarter, up from 1.3% in the fourth quarter. And remember, uh, we, we've seen a zero at the beginning of last year. Looking at what we call our German uh, service revenues, fixed and mobile, the first quarter was down 0.9% after a year-on-year -year decline of 1.1% in the last quarter. This is a small sequential improvement, even despite the difficult comp I mentioned in mobile. The big picture is that underlying trends are going in the right direction, and that we see ourselves broadly in track for medium-term revenue targets that we've presented at the capital market days last year. We added more than 0.7 million German households to our fiber footprint, now and, and now cover 56%. 43% of access lines are already on our IP platform, and we have reached the, to mention that, 91% LTE coverage. 
so far so good in Germany. Let me now quickly present some highlights of our US business. T-Mobile has already presented very strong numbers last week. The first quarter was the seventh quarter in a row in which we won more than 1 million branded postpaid customers. We also added more than 800,000 prepaid customers. Postpaid phone ARPU, excluding the data stash, was stable year on year and quarter on quarter. The strong subscriber growth and stable ARPU combined to accelerating mobile service revenue growth. Despite much higher than expected subscriber growth, reported and core EBITDA grew strongly. As a result of the, uh, the strong first quarter growth, we raised our full year branded postpaid subscriber growth guidance from 2.4 to 3.4 million branded postpaid net ads to a new year range of 3.2 to 3.6 million. In the following slide, we show some of the underlying T-Mobile performance metrics. After strong year-on-year -year declines in 2015, Q1 churn was marginally higher in the first quarter, but we still see scope for further improvement. Our bad debt expense ratio, which we had temporarily increased, declined again as we have promised last year. Our LTE network is now almost nationwide, and due to the recent A-Block deals, we now have access to low-band spectrum covering almost 80% of the US market. This is great news for our customers and will allow us to profitably serve additional markets. Now let's turn to Europe. Our European performance continued to improve. Reported revenues were down 2.4%, but adjusted for deconsolidations and currencies, our revenues were almost stable. Reported EBITDA was down 3% and organic EBITDA was down 2.4%, which also marks an improving trend. I think the bigger picture remains that, excluding the Netherlands, our European business would again have been stable in the first quarter due to some ongoing strong performances, for instance in Greece and in Austria, offsetting some weaknesses elsewhere. As the next chart shows, in Europe, we now have mig migrated almost half of our homes to IP, up from 40% one year ago. Our LTE coverage now stands at 72%, up almost 20% from one year ago. And Tim has already mentioned the excellent perform excellence performance uh, of Dutch and other European networks in the independent drive tests. Now to T-Systems. T-Systems posted strong headline revenue and EBITDA growth, but please be aware that the performance this quarter benefited from an upfront payment related to our toll system, toll system operation in Belgium. Going forward, this operation will then continue on a more regular basis, uh, contribute on a more regular basis. We continue to expect that, driven by innovative offers such as our new cloud initiatives, the momentum in our market unit will continue to improve. A few, few words on financials. Free cash flow was slightly down year on year, but adjusted for the lower dividend from EE, it would have grown just over 10%. This is consistent with our unchanged 4.9 billion free cash flow target for this year. Our adjusted net income was slightly up year on year, but as Tim has mentioned, last year's result benefited from a 175 million settlement that we disclosed at that time. Hence, underlying net income grew double digit. The next slide shows our financial metrics, and I'm pleased to say that at the end of the quarter, at 2.3 times, we are comfortably within our net debt to adjusted EBITDA comfort zone of 2 to 2.5. As a result of our ongoing strong EBITDA growth, we moved from slightly outside this range three quarters ago to now comfortably within that range. Our funding situation remains very comfortable as um, was always uh, also evident in the success of our recent 4.5 billion bond issuance. Tim mentioned that. My final slide summarizes the strategy we presented to you at the last year's capital market days, and I think we um, consistently continue to strongly execute against these targets, and we remain very confident that we will keep delivering them going forward. And now Tim and myself are ready to take your questions. Thank you very much, Tim and Thomas. Now we can start with the Q&A part. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star one on your touchtone telephone. I will announce your name when it's your turn to ask a question. Should you require to cancel your question, please press the star two. Alternatively, you can send us questions via webcast. Just type your question into the box below the stream. 
And please, would you kindly restrict yourselves to no more than two questions at a time? So we're now taking questions. Um, the first question we have uh, from Mathieu at uh, Barclays. Mathieu? Yes, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for taking the questions. Um, first, a question with regards to mobile uh, in Germany. Uh, I do appreciate, obviously, that the comps uh, were tougher. Um, but if we look at the corporate segment, uh, there seems to have been uh, some sort of deterioration in, in the last quarters and certainly in Q1. And I was wondering if that was the result of renewed competitive pressure on that segment um, or um, based on price, or is it that the quality gap uh, between you and some of the other players is reducing and, and therefore it's harder uh, to justify uh, uh, the premium. So basically, if you could give us a little bit of color in that dynamic. And second, um, looking at um, fiber on German fix, obviously great results there, both on retail uh, but also on the wholesale side. Um, is that a dynamic on the wholesale side that you think is, uh, is uh, sustainable? And, uh, and if you could give us a little bit of color as to um, how you think that can grow in the future, that would be great. Thank you very much. Yeah, Mathieu, I'm going to start with, with, um, on the mobile in Germany. Um, as you mentioned, first of all, the one impact is the comps. Um, the other one is uh, volatility we have in B2B anyway. as normal kind of volatility you have in the market. Remember a year ago we mentioned that. It was a positive volatility. Then we mentioned in Q3 there was a loss of a big customer and you have vol volatility by those kind of moves. But um, uh, I think there is no reason to assume that there is any market heating up. It is kind of normal cause of business we see in B2B and normal cause of volatility driven by large accounts. Uh, um, win or losses we, we have in here. And I turn over to Tim on the fiber and the fixed line. Um, Mathieu, um, thank you for uh, your questions with regard to... Um, sorry, Mathieu, my... Um, th thank you for the question on fiber and um, German fixed. Um, uh, yes, I think we have seen um, a, a huge improvement um, and um, interesting-wise for um, the um, fiber products and the net additions in the first quarter was outstanding. I think the highest ones we have seen for ages here in this company, 660,000 uh, net additions in the first quarter alone. Um, this is very successful and that reflects um, that uh, um, in the new vectoring areas that we have started uh, commercializing, um, we see as well the take up um, of, of consumers. Um, and what we see as well is we see the impact on our um, data um, uh, uh, revenues here um, uh, in the business. On the fiber side, two thirds of um, the total business is retail or one third of um, uh, the, the business is wholesale. Um, I think this, this sounds like a sound uh, mix here. Um, interesting, uh, a lot of our competitors are criticizing us for deploying um, a, a, a copper um, a, a on the last mile. Um, but exactly this, um, uh, uh, competitors are the ones who are selling our product um, best. Um, the 2.9% wholesale revenue we have seen, um, we expect um, is um, um, uh, sustainable. Um, we might even expect a slight uh, improvement throughout the, um, uh, the total year. Uh, overall, we are very optimistic um, that um, uh, we see higher uptake rates on the uh, fixed line uh, connectivity throughout the year. The next question I have is uh, from uh, Andrew at uh, Goldman. Andrew, can we please have your question? Good afternoon, everyone. I had um, a follow-up uh, question just to Matthias on German fixed, and then a question on the team as funding, if that's okay. Um, on, on German fixed, are you seeing the fiber rollout as the key driver of German broadband penetration accelerating? That, that's something we've seen in other European markets. Is that giving you more confidence in the German broadband revenue growth outlook, um, or is it new content driving the uptick? Any kind of color on what's, what's driving that acceleration and, um, and driving driving your um, positive outlook. And then on the TEMAS, TEMAS funding, could you talk more about what else you can do to achieve more efficient TEMAS funding? W would you ever look to buy in the minorities of this asset as a, a route to lowering finance costs? Uh, and what do you mean on your comment that you're sticking to a case-by-case -case logic with regard to this? Thank you. 
Um, I think this question is an extension to um, uh, Mathieu's um, uh, question here. Um, and um, 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 where is the growth coming from? Um, look, uh, there are new areas where we have higher bandwidth. This is um, encouraging for customers. Second, we have Magenta Eins um, and our commercial, um, uh, the branding, uh, the presentation, the image of the product is very well received here from the, um, uh, from the customer sides. So uh, we have a high footfall in the shops talking about this, what is it about and what is the advantage for me. The third one is we have recently launched the new TV entertain platform. Um, by the way, uh, it has outstanding functionalities as I mentioned. Please have a look into that one. Um, and um, uh, this is something um, which uh, we expect is in the upcoming quarters, uh, in addition driving um, uh, the sale of it. Um, so it is a mixture of everything. Um, there is, um, um, on top of that, more demand for customers on the internet in general. Um, so um, even Germany starts, you know, digitalizing themselves. Um, we see that as well with our smart home uh, um, uh, applications here, um, especially on the security features. So, um, um, in principle, um, uh, uh, these are the drivers uh, for the growth we have, we have seen. And um, due to the fact that we have a lot of, let's say, areas where we still haven't sold the high bandwidth, um, the market potential is still um, uh, quite big for us. Yeah, and on the question of the uh, Team US funding, um, as we mentioned, um, it is a case-by-case -case decision uh, for the following reason. Uh, so it does mean we are not in principle um, funding now or will fund in the future everything uh, T-Mobile US is requesting, but it's case-by-case. -case. Uh, one reason is obviously we have a third of the, um, the, uh, the company is owned by minorities, so we need to respect the the rights of the minorities and do that always at arm's length perspective. That's number one. Number two, um, we're, we're trying to optimize uh, the cost of financing on one hand, but also make sure that we uh, keep the, the very good access T-Mobile US uh, has to the funding market, keep that intact. So we should always have a balance between both of them and obviously then also stay very disciplined in terms of um, the investments um, looking forward in spectrum and network. So. Um, that is the reason why, after we uh, agreed on the two billion in, I think it was Mar March. Was, yeah, it was March uh, when we agreed about the two billion. Uh, T-Mobile US um, then later, a month later, went into the market uh, and, and raised another billion uh, in the external market. As I said, to keep also um, the access to capital markets intact for for the US, and that's basically the philosophy behind. It's a case by case decision. The next question uh, I have is from uh, Robert uh, Grindel. Robert? Uh, hi there. Oh, yeah, hi there. Sorry, I was on my headset. Um, yes, two questions. Um, we, we talked about, you talked about uh, the strong growth in fiber. Uh, that's growing very strongly, particularly relative to TV customers. It does sound like you're updating your entertain platform from a technology perspective. Uh, do you think that's sufficient, or are you now feeling the urge to also update your um, product from a content perspective as well? And secondly, would you kindly say a few words about the Dutch market and your options there in light of uh, the recent consolidation event in that market, and in your case, uh, a deal didn't go through? Many thanks. So I'm going to start, uh, Robert, I'm going to start on the, on the entertain and, and TV side. First of all, I think you're spot on. Uh, we have a lot of ingredients for success at hand. Um, meaning new infrastructure with higher bandwidth, uh, the new platform, and uh, I guess um, there, there should be an improvement in the run rate we're showing right now. So uh, that, that's number one. Uh, number two is I think what we're doing already is on the content side, um, looking where we can add some value by adding content like we've done that uh, on ice hockey, on, on uh, smaller uh, parts of um, sports business uh, in the past already. Uh, basketball, ice hockey, those kinds of things. Um, and uh, it, is, it is not the big uh, topic, but it's adding value for some segments of customers, and we're always looking into opportunities where we can find uh, another element of being more attractive to customers. But I think the key drivers 
having more infrastructure in hand that allows um, uh, to provide a good TV service and a new platform that should be the big two drivers to increase the run rate. Um, let me talk a, a second about, let's say, the main features of our new TV platform. I think um, we have a seven-day replay, um, we have instant restart, uh, we have a total new interface. By the way, not anymore, you know, starting with the EPG. It just starts with what is the hottest content on uh, on um, uh, on TV at that point in time. Um, so what are people watching? Um, we have um, mobile TV capabilities, uh, including um, a, a cloud recording. So wherever you are, you could watch the content you are interested in. And you could easily switch um, your mobile content onto any screen uh, which is connected to our platform. So uh, there's a wipe functionality which brings the content then from your pet or from your, from your mobile device onto a screen. Um, Entertain TV um, um, will be also available over hybrid. Um, so um, um, it is uh, not only over DSL, um, so over-the-top uh, services um, um, are included into this one and um, we have new partners on block there as well um, so that the content is, um, uh, as I always told, uh, it's an aggregation platform. So when you look for something, you will see where this uh, service is available, whether this is um, in, um, on TV, whether it's on video on demand, whether it's on SVOD um, with partners like um, Maxdome or with partners like Netflix. Um, so um, you could see the trailer. So so you have a kind of um, organiz organized, you know, funnel for all the content, and you could get access to every um, uh, content um, you are interested in. The um, TV mobile functionality is 6.95 uh, per month. Um, it, um, it is included in the normal data volume, so it is not a zero-rated uh, service here. Um, and um, the product um, entertain will cost the same as the old one, um, which is um, the 1495, um, 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 which you put on top of um, uh, the service um, um, uh, which you which you currently have. Your question with regard to content um, is the same as to previous meetings. Um, maybe your question is with regard to Bundesliga. Um, and um, the ongoing auction. The first, um, um, due to the rules of the of the process here, you know, uh, we are not able to comment or to signal any kind of um, 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 uh, details here. Um, what I could tell you is um, um, the um, the content. Um, um, uh, football content is um, um, an essential building block for our TV strategy and uh, um, we are the aggregator so um, it is our um, intention to um, to, um, uh, to be able to stream the content um, 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 with a partner or you know directly from our side um, um, this is something um, uh, which uh, which we which we have in mind. Um, the conditions of the tender um, um, uh, are um, uh, released um, and have been approved by the Bundeskartellamt. Um, uh, no single buyer rule has been implemented, but different than the um, uh, um, rule in the in uh, UK. Here uh, in Germany, is it if one bidder acquires all Bundesliga live packages, an additional over-the-top package will be sold. So this is, let's say, um, uh, their uh, way of, uh, of um, uh, designing the no single buyer rule. And um, our goal, as I uh, said already, is to have a fair access to the right content for our customers, uh, but we are not dogmatic, um, whether it will be done via purchase of content or via partnerships. And uh, to add uh, to the second part of the question, or the second question on the Dutch market, um, uh, first of all, as you as you know, we never comment on any M and A speculation. So that's to the second part of the question about a failed deal. Uh, but uh, the first question is about what is our what are our options? I think uh, KPN has been um, successfully driving convergence very aggressively in the marketplace and also LTE. And uh, Tim mentioned that in his speech in the beginning. I, I, we, we think we've been too late in our network investments by a year, roughly. But I think the good news is now 
we have a very good network. You know, uh, if you look at the uh, LTE network today, we've seen P3 tests, uh, the, the guys who are performing the tests across Europe, with the highest score ever in LTE network in the, in the Dutch uh, network. We know that we have, from a spectrum position, um, uh, roughly uh, two times the, the capabilities and the capacity there. Um, so we have an, uh, a very high performing um, network and we have a very, very good spectrum position. Uh, national 4G coverage since Q4 last year and so on. So um, network is in a good shape. Um, nevertheless, you know, looking at Q2, for instance, last year, our net ads have been minus 85. Uh, last three quarters have been around 25k net ads per quarter. So we improved from that minus 85 to plus 25. Um, we restructured the tariffs. Um, we launched 1st of Feb uh, T-Mobile together. Um, uh, opening up the whole thing to the family. Um, we uh, also de-emphasized split contracts, which on the other hand weighs on our margins, as you can see looking at the, the uh, EBITDA in the Netherlands. We do pilots in terms of fixed mobile substitution for the home. We call that, uh, oh no, my Dutch is not good enough. So the translation is um, for the house, whatever it means in Dutch. Um, hmm? For the <laughs> Okay, so and um, the, the, I think the key focus now is having the good network in place, um, utilizing it, uh, finding the right proposition to attract those customers who are very affine to a mobile proposition, and um, turning not only net ads around, as it happens already uh, the last three quarters, but also then over time the revenues and finally also the cash contribution, the free cash flow. Thank you, Thomas. The next question is from Simon from City. Oh, hello, folks. Thank you very much for taking the question. Simple one, I think. Um, just looking at Germany again, could you contrast and compare the acceleration in voice line losses to the better performance on the broadband side and just say if there's any price implication of, of seeing that coming through this quarter? Thanks. Absolutely. Um, I think the what we expect with regard to the line losses for um, uh, the remainder of the year is a number um, uh, where, where we expect um, should be in the vicinity of last year's numbers. Um, remember, last year it was something around 280k um, uh, that was on the broadband side. Um, and um, so um, the, um, uh, the line losses and the broadband net ads, um, they should be balanced. Um, uh, to be um, straightforward here, I expect higher broadband sales throughout the year um, compared to the first quarter. Remember last year we were almost, you know, stable. Um, now we are up uh, 60,000 plus, uh, but uh, I think the, the run rate could be higher throughout um, the, the next quarters. That is ex ex at least my internal um, uh, measures, while at the same time um, the line losses, you know, um, would be in the vicinity of what we have seen last year. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Tim. And the next question I have mm -hmm. is from John, uh, John Dan at uh, RBC. John? Hi there, it's um, two questions. The first was, I think there have been some um, price, there's been quite a lot of price movements on the front book, removal of discounts, re recently reintroduction of, say, uh, regional discounting. Um, do you think there's a moment when you can put through a back book price increase, so a price increase through the whole base? And then secondly, is there any update on the process toward receiving regional subsidies for fiber rollouts? I think, first of all, you know, what happened last year is that we, uh, in several steps, uh, pulled back um, promotional activities in the fixed line. That's what we're basically talking here. Uh, we started in Q2 and then Q3, and, and finally in Q4, we, we pulled out the regional uh, promotions. Um, and I think it's quite a ty normal type of behavior in the marketplace. You, th that's the way you test the water, how far you can go in terms of um, getting prices up or removing uh, promotional uh, elements. We found out the first two ones who have been, uh, two and a half ones to say, uh, been quite accepted by the market. The, num the last one, the regional promotions, um, maybe was too far to go. Uh, so what we decided to do is from, I think, mid of March on, we, we put them back again into the marketplace uh, to, to get the run rates up. Tim mentioned that um, should should see higher run rates during the course of the 
the remainder of the year. Uh, so I, I consider that as a normal type of behavior. You test the water, you see how far you can go, and then if you're too far, you, you move a little bit back. That's what basically happens around the, uh, the regional discounts. Um, I don't think there is a huge and big back book uh, element in the whole game here. Um, a churn is low. Uh, we're looking forward uh, to um, a churn expectation this year. There is no expectation that there is an uptake uh, here. Um, and as you see, uh, the, the broadband revenues are increasing by one point or have increased by 1.8% in this quarter. So um, I think we should be good. Okay, By thanks. the way, oh, I, I think um, um, to add one sentence here to Thomas, um, it is our clear intention um, and um, give us some credit for our more for more initiatives. Uh, interesting while um, uh, Vodafone um, has followed this initiatives here um, to increase the value on our mobile site and increase the um, the value due to the um, uh, heavy investments in the infrastructure. And we're trying to do the same on the um, broadband side. Uh, one intention is to do it by upselling. The other side is it by taking out um, uh, subsidies uh, uh, out of the initiatives. Um, but we always, you know, said uh, we have to balance our um, net at market shares um, uh, uh, towards this um, this value assumptions. Um, and um, that is what, what Thomas just described. Um, uh, in, in the end of 2015, um, we had, uh, you know, um, uh, reduced a lot of discounting, like uh, router promotions, regional promotions, uh, some shortening uh, promo periods, um, 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 and other things. Um, uh, we have uh, seen that um, uh, this has an impact, so we have uh, slightly rebalanced that. But in principle, um, what we want to see here is a growing German business, both on mobile and both on fixed and both on B2C and both on uh, uh, the B2B side. And that is what we are striving for and, um, uh, and I hope we're going to be successful by what we bring into the market. Let me come to the Nahbereich and let me come to the decision um, uh, on uh, the subsidization of fixed and infrastructure. Um, the first thing is that uh, our intention is to build 80% of the country um, uh, with um, 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 fiber built out, um, um, built on the vectoring technology. So that means um, up to 150 megabit, but then uh, very soon after that, following by super vectoring, which is software update, uh, going to 250 megabit per second um, as, as the primary, um, let's say, step towards the gigabit society. Um, we do not want to have a split between um, the countryside and the cities because a lot of customers of us sitting in the countryside and we want to cover them as well. We do not want to end like in Sweden uh, where you have good bandwidth in the cities but only 30% of the uh, countryside is properly covered. This was the intention behind um, uh, um, the, um, uh, the discussion with the Bundesnetzagentur um, and, and the vectoring uh, decision, which is now pending uh, in, in, in Brussels. And I hope um, that we get soon a feedback on, uh, on that one. For the reminder of the 20%, um, uh, the, um, uh, there, the, there is a commercially, um, for all, by the way, players in this, um, in this market, a subsidization uh, needed. Um, the German Federal Minister of Transport and Infrastructure published the detail of um, the NGA state aid um, uh, in the vicinity of 2.7 billion um, uh, for, the, for supporting build out in these areas. Um, in the meanwhile, um, uh, 55 regional projects um, um, have been launched um, and have been subsidized uh, with a total amount of around 500 million euros. Um, and um, uh, what we see is here um, the first tenders will be decided now in May June uh, uh, time period, and uh, it looks quite um, uh, positive uh, uh, with regard to Deutsche Telekom's um, role in this in, in this regard. So the money is now coming uh, uh, to these regions. I think this is good for customers, good for Germany, uh, and it's the right um, uh, way going forward. Um, in principle, it's technical agnostic, so it's not only related um, uh, to, um, uh, to fiber um, uh, to the building or fiber to the apartment rollout. Um, it is agnostic to this one, depends on the, uh, on the area where um, um, the RFQ or the, um, the tender has been launched. 
Um, so um, we are quite comfortable that um, at the end of the day, uh, with the vectoring decision and with the um, um, uh, the subsidies which are coming to the market that Deutsche Telekom will have in the vicinity of 90% coverage um, uh, with their fiber network across Germany by 2018. Maybe a few uh, additions on the financial impact of uh, those activities. Um, I think our, our current assessment is that uh, the, the majority of uh, CAPEX needed uh, to make that um, um, subsidized rollout happen will occur in 17, so there will be a smaller chunk in 16, a smaller one in 18, and a big chunk in 17. Our guess is that somewhere between 700 and a billion is the vicinity we're talking about, um, uh, um, uh, uh, between 16 and 18, so in total. Um, where, as I said, roughly 100, 200 million this year, 100, 200 like this in 18, and the remainder in, in 17. Um, uh, that was obviously not part of our guidance we've given last year in the capital market days around the CAPEX, because at this time there was no subsidy available. So that is additional, but I think it's important to understand that the free cash flow guidance for this year and the 10% CAGR growth CAGR stays intact, so there is no change on that one. Thank you, Thomas. Our next question um, uh, is going to be from Justin. Justin at Credit Suisse. Thank you. Um, yeah, two questions, please. Um, just come back to Germany again. Um, I think we've, you know, we've seen over a, the, the last year a bit of a competitive fight back. You've had Vodafone doing Project Spring and closing some of the gap. You've had O2, um, I suppose, starting to build 4G, so they they could start to catch up as well. And just wondering what you can do, what you're planning to do to stay ahead of the game um, uh, in the mobile race. Obviously, we've got this rural coverage. What about your, city, your speeds in the cities? You know, are you going to start building more cell sites? Are you going to roll out 2.6 gigahertz? Do you think you can, can sort of maintain a speed premium? Um, secondly, uh, a similar sort of question in fixed line. The uh, United Internet somehow won the P3 connect test for fixed line last year. It appears to be due to the modems they were offering. Uh, what, what are you doing to, uh, to win that award back again uh, this year? And then finally, there's been a, a price move by Vodafone on Otello, uh, where they appear to have uh, come down on price. It is just a 3G product, but do you consider that to be a potentially uh, disruptive move? Thank you very much. I think uh, I'm going to start on the mobile side, the first question. Um, first of all, Tim is complaining because I started to answer the question. If you want to jump in, jump in, come on. Okay, so um, <laughs> first part of the question uh, on, on the German uh, mobile infrastructure. First of all, I think um, we've been in a superior position uh, on the spectrum side uh, due to the LTE auction 2010. It was on on 1.8, we, we um, used that to gain competitive advantage. Again, we have a low band advantage uh, from last year's. So um, looking forward next year's, there is an opportunity for us on low band to utilize the spectrum advantage we have in here, number one. Number two, we have by far the highest level of backhauling by fiber in the infrastructure, which plays a very important role. Um, I think number three is, uh, and you mentioned that it's not only coverage, but it's also um, what kind of uh, stable um, and, and good bandwidth you get within uh, rural areas, within buildings. Exactly the same storyline, by the way, we're pursuing in the U.S. by, by uh, acquiring low band spectrum, improving there not only a signal outdoor, but what customers really um, uh, experience. So we are heavily and, and aggressively investing in those areas I mentioned. Additionally, as you know, um, one important driver for differentiation from our point of view is also our converged products with Magenta Eins, and you know that they're doing, we're doing very well on, on that side here. So that's basically uh, keep going and aggressively investing in, in on the mobile infrastructure in those areas, plus do, um, do the converge stuff. By the way, the last um, measurements I have seen uh, on bandwidth, uh, Voda versus uh, Deutsche Telekom in Germany, the gap was not declining, it was widening. Um, so um, I think that's important to understand as well. And I think, Tim, you've been so keen to answer the question, next question, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> 
Oh, no, look, we like competition. Uh, and um, I like the next, you know, um, drive test with, uh, with Vodafone, and I like the next, you know, um, uh, competition or comp uh, benchmark with uh, United Internet on the uh, on the modem side. Um, uh, look, um, if we are not uh, number one, we have a discussion here. Um, so I like that uh, because um, uh, it's our ambition in every category to be leading um, and to be number one. Um, to give you an example, today uh, we're quite proud to say that um, uh, we have won um, a, a very big uh, shop comparison uh, from Connect um, uh, in 250 shops here in, um, in Germany and Deutsche Telekom um, is clearly number one compared to um, the other players. Um, um, interesting statement was um, uh, the um, the shoppers were um, um, impressed by the enthusiasm of people about their products. Um, um, so um, I think we're on the right track, and um, I promise you we will do everything um, uh, to to win this number one position back. Um, and, and if it's router or it's uh, um, bandwidth or whatever, you know, um, uh, we are working on that one. Um, the second question was with regard to the pricing of Otello and whether this is disruptive. You know, the first thing um, what I mentioned already is um, that Vodafone um, seems to adhere uh, to the more for more logic and to focus more on retail uh, over uh, wholesale. Um, and um, I think this is the right move um, uh, towards an infrastructure competition um, than, um, than rather just going on prices. I think that's a positive sentiment here. However, recent MVNO pricing actions look quite aggressive um, with uh, big data bundles um, already in the anti tariff, um, being it on your phone, uh, smart mobile with two gigabit um, um, for 12 months for 799. Um, and 49.9 uh, afterwards. So, um, in this smart shopper segment, there is more competition. Uh, we clearly have to state that um, um, in the top premium segments, uh, everything looks good, but in the smart shopper segment, there is um, a dynamic. And uh, we read the Otello um, data volume increase um, the way to stay competitive in this landscape. Um, for us, this is the, um, the area of Kongsta, um, where we are present and competing here, and, um, and we have to look how, we, um, how this will impact um, uh, the business over time, but um, 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 this is focusing very much on the, on the smart software side. So um, I hope this is answering your question. Um, and we have a very uh, comprehensive overview about all um, um, usage uh, and, um, and price promotions here in the market, and maybe uh, our investor relations um, team could change, uh, share that. Then you get an overview about the dynamic of the market quite easily. Uh, thanks, Tim. Uh, next question uh, I'd have from uh, Emmett at uh, Morgan Stanley. Emmett? Yes, thanks very much, Hannes. Uh, thanks for taking the questions. Uh, I've just got two quick ones. Uh, the first question is on the debt refinancing opportunity. I think you mentioned you refied 4.5 billion euros uh, since the beginning of the year. Could you maybe just give a quick update on what debt maturities are coming up at the Deutsche Tel AG level over the next couple of years and at what rate you believe you could refi at? Um, and then the second question is, uh, an area we probably don't get many questions, it's on GHS. Um, just looking back over 14 and 15, 2014 and 15, I guess you burned about 250, 270 million euros of cash each quarter uh, throughout 14 and 15, but um, it's a lot better in Q1 of 2016. There's only cash burn of about 160, 170 million euros. Is there a step change there now, or is it just a timing question? Thank you. Okay, so um, let me start on the um, GHS question here. Um, and um, um, by the way, I hope that the people in the GHS not have burned the money, so that they have created value for that money. Um, nevertheless, um, um, I think I sit on that payroll as well, but um, I'm kidding. Here, um, uh, look, um, I think um, what is very important here is that um, in the GHS we are driving um, heavy um, uh, um, headcount reduction um, um, uh, uh, already over the last year, but even in the uh, in the in the next years, um, and um, so um, that um, we are trying to reduce 
um, um, uh, redundant uh, structures, complexity, um, and um, uh, uh, non-contributing um, elements out of this uh, out of this asset. Um, um, we will have um, uh, less people sitting in the vehicles of. Um, the um, uh, Vivento and uh, and other areas, um, so the placement service areas um, where we see um, uh, further um, cost reductions going on, but um, um, we are reducing heavily the um, floor space um, and the rents um, uh, of our locations. Um, uh, next time you're here, maybe in the headquarters, you will see um, that we are rebuilding um, the entire um, landscape here into. Um, 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 uh, open office spaces, um, uh, which are significantly more efficient and will enable us to reduce rents um, outside of the, um, the areas. So um, um, it is our clear intention. Um, and we did you know, several benchmarks on that one, um, and this is affecting GHS as well, to reduce um, um, cost and headcount um, uh, within, the, um, uh, within the central headquarters and the GHS functions. Uh, and Emmett, on the first question on, on refinancing, um, for first of all, the numbers for 2017 and 2018. 2017 is uh, around 3.5 billion, 2018 is around 1.2 uh, 1, 1. billion, so not really very much. Um, in terms of this year, we are done, except um, um, you know, we've, we've um, agreed with uh, T Mobile US. Uh, facilities of in total four billion dollars, four billion dollars, so three and a half million, more or less three and a half million euros, a billion euros, uh, and depending on how the outcome of the auction will be, uh, there will be uh, some additional need for this year. But um, other than this, this year is done, and then as I said, next year is three and a half and one point two for seventeen and eighteen. Uh, the next question I have is from uh, Dominic at uh, HSBC. Dominic, please. Can we get an update on uh, BT and your discussions around potential cooperation? Sorry, Dominic, we couldn't hear you just now. Um, could you maybe ask a question once more? I, I, then, I think uh, I got the question. I think the question was an um, update on BT and um, um, uh, uh, how we are progressing in this regard. First, um, we are sh happy shareholder in BT, and I'm a happy board member of BT. Um, so um, uh, that, that was a nice start with these folks. Um, um, we uh, believe in the EE merger activities and the synergies here, and um, um, we have seen a good uh, quarter, I think. Or, uh, sorry, I cannot talk about let's say the numbers, but uh, about the developments, you know, um, which have been announced from this company. We see um, multiple opportunities for uh, for mutual and beneficial collaborations. For instance, in purchasing, in technology, um, and even investigation on um, uh, how we co cooperate in the global service business. As um, uh, so, we are talking with BT about number of collaborations uh, here. Um, but you know, it's too early to say. Um, uh, you know, uh, what are the let's next tangible uh, steps we are um, uh, taking? Um, so um, clearly, is one thing. Um, this is a very early um, uh, stage, very early days with BT, um, um, and we know that BT is quite busy with integrating EE. Um, and um, um, uh, there are various regulatory reviews. Um, uh, so um, uh, don't expect uh, something um, uh, uh, in, in, in short um, um, terms here. Thanks, Tim. And uh, now I have a question uh, from Amandeep, and uh, I think it's the uh, last or second to last question that we are going to take, depending on how long we take to answer it. But Amandeep, uh, could you please uh, ask your questions? Great, thank you. Uh, two questions I have, please. First of all, is uh, similar to what Emmett was asking. I mean, how, how do you sort of relate the sort of ongoing heavy restructuring costs, whether you look at it within GHS or Vivento or wherever they're booked, um, with uh, the progress towards all IP, where you're uh, planning to have 100% lines IP by 2018? Is that the 
time horizon over which we should expect the restructuring charges to peak and then start coming down dramatically, or do we should we think of these as a sort of ongoing uh, feature? That's the first question. Uh, the second question is just on the general health of the mobile market. You know, everyone talks about German market repair post consolidation, data monetization, rational behaviour. I know you've alluded to some points and where the extra competition is, but you know, from where we're sitting, uh, Telefonica Deutschland is shrinking mobile service revenues. You're shrinking mobile service revenues. We're not sure what Vodafone will print, but consensus is looking for, you know, just the, the correct side of flat. And Freenet's numbers were not great. So uh, can you help us understand why the German market is such a great market? Because we can't really see it in the numbers. Mandy, I'm going to start on the restructuring costs. You know, um, I think what uh, last year in the capital market days, uh, I, I've shown a profile of how the total uh, restructuring costs should develop uh, and I think one key message was they should decline and not peak uh, towards 2018 and the second message was 16 will be much lower level than 15 uh, and 17 up. Uh, now what, what, have, what has changed in the course of the last 12 months is that the German state decided to have a kind of last, um, last uh, round of um, early retirement exits for civil servants. Uh, that was a decision by the government. So what we, what we did is, deviating from the message last year, is we decided to use that kind of last exit opportunity to offer it to each and everyone who, who wants and is willing to, to leave based on that scheme, the company. So um, what, what basically will happen is uh, this year will be a little bit higher than last year uh, announcements, um, not with impact on the uh, on the on the cash side, but with impact on the special factors on on uh, the EBITDA side, and then from there on towards 2018, we should see lower levels. Why? Because we are moving a lot of workforce into um, partial retirement schemes already. We are using the time of the IP migration to flexibilize the workforce, so to have external workforce or the internal ones more flexibilized flexibilized towards 2018. So. Um, I think there is uh, no different news than that uh, on the restructuring side. Look, your question with regard to the mobile market, is Germany a great market or not? Um, um, look, um, it's big. Um, whether it's great is something um, uh, different. But um, uh, now, what is, what is Germany? I think first thing is um, that we have always said, you know, it's not that we have uh, guided the market um, uh, towards an significant improvements. Um, nor we have guided the market into a, a significant um, uh, um, uh, um, deterioration here. Um, what we always have said is um, uh, this Moore's law has to stop at one point in time that you build additional capacity year over year, invest into infrastructure for both B2C and B2B, but at the same time you're not able to monetize on the on, uh, on the data. And this is, let's say, I think an economical um, reasoning which we are just trying to follow. And um, for this, our strategy going forward was we want to differentiate. And there are two areas where I'm more positive than you are, uh, where I see differentiation. I see the differentiation on the upper end. I see it on the LTE, high bandwidth Magenta customers, Magenta mobile customers, who are willing to pay a premium for good coverage and high bandwidth. That is, let's say, one thing what we are seeing and where we are very encouraged about. The second differentiation what we see is on the B2B side. Yes, the B2B side was a little bit more competitive, on the classical um, 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 uh, telephony side, but on the data consumption, we see an uptake here as well, and we see new market opportunities which are driven from the connectivity. You know, be it cloud services, being the combination with security service, being the Internet of Things services. You know, our cloud service combined with the um, telecommunication service is growing by 30%. So this is a very nice number um, in this huge segment where we have a very um, a strong market share. What I'm more worried about is the um, is irrational behavior of MVNOs, but even the MVNOs are not as capable as they were in the past because of the lack of good LTE um, uh, 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 services. So I very much, you know, um, understand the decision here from, from Vodafone towards um, uh, United Internet. 
And second, um, this um, MVNO segment, and we have seen that in other markets, is, um, yes, very competitive, but from a total service revenue market share perspective, it is not as, um, uh, uh, as relevant. So, um, clearly, we are more optimistic um, with regard to the um, mobile revenues um, uh, going forward, but you're absolutely right. Um, this market is still shrinking. Uh, it is less shrinking than in the past. And on top of that, what we should always anticipate and what we have anticipated in our numbers is that the roaming revenues, you know, are disappearing now over the next years. Um, we have said the net impact for our European and German activities in the vicinity of 150 million. The net net, we do not know the elasticity yet, uh, the full elasticity yet, but we expect a kind of value um, um, of 70 to 80 million revenues, which might um, uh, go out of the business for the next um, uh, one, and, one and a half years. Um, so that is, let's say, our, our internal calculation for Deutsche Telekom. But this is maybe um, eating or will eat some of the um, revenues out of the, um, uh, the mobile market um, 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 from a negative element here. Okay, thanks, Tim. Um, the roaming uh, impact that Tim has just mentioned relates to 2016, and there will be a further impact in 2017. And it's about uh, uh, it's split almost equally between Germany and uh, Europe. Uh, just, uh, uh, I think we take uh, one or two more questions. So one question is via email from uh, Stefan Beasian, uh, and it is. Uh, Verizon is starting to be, from Raymond James, sorry, Verizon is starting to be vocal on 5G and uh, wants to go early on 5G. How uh, big do you assess the financing needs to go uh, 5G in the US and would you be ready to accelerate CapEx at the expense of group uh, free cash flow? Look, by the way, the 5G standardization is something which is not defined by Verizon alone. Um, this is an industry standard um, uh, which is worked out by the GSMA and other uh, constituencies. Uh, the real 5G um, deployment is something where we earliest expect something in the vicinity of 2018 from a, from a standardization perspective, 2019 and maybe from an early supply. We expect, you know, South Korean with the Olympics coming uh, first and uh, maybe then mass market deployment, something in the vicinity of 2020. Um, uh, when, when Verizon is talking about 5G, they're not talking about real 5G. They're talking about 5G.3 or 5.4, uh, whatever, you know, um, um, uh, software um, uh, standards in their, um, in their network. This is not real 5G. Um, and, um, you know, this is a marketing gag. Um, uh, uh, how to um, trying to own this uh, category? Honestly, um, um, uh, um, I would be cautious on this kind of advertising because we made our experience. I remember pretty well. Um, um, uh, previous to the Uncarrier management, um, um, uh, we launched 4G, uh, but at the end of the day, not being able um, to launch real 4G in the marketplace, and the reaction of the customer was. Um, quite rude. Um, so um, with fairness and with transparency, um, uh, I would launch 5G the moment, you know, I have really, let's say, a step up function uh, in the quality, in the bandwidth um, and the quality of service and the latency uh, in specific. Okay. Um, and and do be uh, do, uh, please be aware that of course in the US we have a dense network already um, because it's a high frequency network historically we have small cells and we even have some uh, high frequency spectrum that is suitable uh, for uh, 5G so uh, when it comes uh, we'll be prepared and uh, the final final question maybe and, and where, where sorry Thomas. just to add one thing because there was one element of the question was related to the free cash flow impact and uh, last year I was very clear in the capital market days that we do not expect the need for additional COPEX to go away, but that our planning is based on incremental additional COPEX year by year. So there's a COPEX growth envelope in the US anticipated. Yes, uh, thanks Thomas. And uh, you know, final question, maybe just one in the interest of time. Uh, Ulrich from uh, Jeffries, can we have your final question please? Uh, oh, thank you. Okay. Well, if it's one, um, I'd say um, your Magenta tariffs under the new uh, pricing have been running for some time. Now, I was wondering if you could share with uh, us um, the initial 
um, sort of momentum, the traction that you're seeing, and then particularly in that context, comment maybe one of your one of your resellers has commented today that they have seen um, all that upside from the higher prices actually reinvested in in higher commissions um, by Deutsche Telekom specifically. They named Deutsche Telekom in this in this context. Um, can you confirm that? And if yes, is this just a temporary measure? I think, uh, you know, the, the um, intention um, of um, the new tariffs with the more for more concept was to address pain points of customers, uh, being um, the, the data allowance um, in terms of having that in an appropriate size for the customer's demand, uh, the roaming and the Wi-Fi. And um, I think one of the big reasons why that basic price increase resonated well in the marketplace with the customers was because it it was addressing those pain points. Um, that's number one uh, uh, part of the answer. The second part of the answer is, you know, um, we always have dealer provisions. There, There is nothing, nothing new in this. And I think what you normally do if you launch a new product, you do some promotional activities to make some buzz and make that um, uh, kind of hype, and then obviously you also play around a little bit with promotions. So that that's a kind of normal situation. There's nothing special about this one. I think the key element is, as I said, that it is addressing the customer's pain points, and that's resonating well with the customers. Okay, thanks, Thomas. And I think um, I now uh, hand over to Tim for... Um, a few final sentences. <laughs> if you <laughs> thank you, thank you, Hannes. Thank you. Um, I got used uh, to them. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Hannes. Thank you, everybody. Uh, look, um, this was, a, I think, for my um, um, reading, a very solid um, a working quarter of Deutsche Telekom. Um, there was no fancy stuff around. Let's say with the M and A activities, um, it was very much focused um, uh, internally. Um, what is now um, the main subjects for the management for me personally for the upcoming quarter? I think there's high um, attention on the U.S. auction. Um, that is um, uh, one major topic. Um, I think um, supporting the U.S. team to uh, keep on um, uh, working. Um, um, the the market share was you know of, of what they gained something in the vicinity of 189 percent. So outstanding performance. Um, what the U.S. team um, uh, is doing here. Um, our main focus on the operations is on Germany. I uh, think what we have to work on is on um, the fixed line side to better monetize our infrastructure. Um, we will uh, we will drive um, the net at numbers um, on the fixed line side. We will drive uh, our new TV um, um, platform because that's a very nice uh, upselling opportunity. Um, and um, we will ver ver very carefully maneuver in the mobile space um, uh, where we want to create additional value um, uh, as the leader here in, uh, in this um, market environment. My last sentence is on Europe. We have not had any question on Europe, but um, I would like to uh, draw your attention to, um, um, to the development here, because um, what we see is um, we had a growing revenue, if you take the Netherlands out of the equation for a moment. We talked about the Netherlands, but uh, we have seen in all markets increasing revenues on fixed line, um, which is a very good development. Um, um, and Magenta Wines is, is paying back here as well. Um, so um, 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 a swallow doesn't make a spring is a, is a, is a say we have here in, in, in Germany. But I think um, we see the uh, development in, uh, in Europe quite encouraging. And the same is true for the systems. I think the master plan in our turnaround plan um, is taking um, uh, is taking um, improvements and signs of, of significant um, uh, turnaround um, um, now over some quarters. And the order entry with all the new propositions on cloud is very strong um, uh, with all the digitalization moves um, we've seen in the uh, adjacent industry. So. Um, um, the final message, you know, with regard to Deutsche Telekom and with regard to the management commitment is we won't stop. Thank you very much. <laughs> However, the conference call is about to stop. So uh, uh, should you still have uh, further questions, uh, we kindly ask you to contact uh, us at the Investor Relations Department. And as you know, we will be out on the road quite a lot in the next few weeks as well. So we look forward to seeing you then. And with that, I hand back to the operator. We'd like to thank you for participating at this conference. 
The recording of this conference will be available for the next seven days by dialing country code 49180520470888 via reference number.